and I appreciate the invitation. Uh, I hope everyone's having a wonderful uh, session there. So as I get ready to share my screen, we can go from there. Are you able to now see my screen? All okay? Yes. Excellent. Okay, so the um, we really appreciate the invitation. Um, my name is Amit. I'm based out of Singapore. I look after the modern workplace and security business for Microsoft from a worldwide perspective. Uh, like uh, was said in the introduction, I've been at Microsoft now for 24 uh, plus years. Uh, have been in education for the last 10 uh, plus years. And a lot of my focus now in the last kind of two years has been in getting ready with our, uh, I suppose the opportunity that lays ahead for all of us to power AI transformation in education with the Microsoft Cloud. So, you know, my my uh, history has been with Microsoft since Windows 3.11 days. So I've seen a lot of transformation that has happened in those past, uh, you know, three decades that I've had the opportunity to be at Microsoft to go from being a client server world to being mobile first to being social networking to cloud and now the amazing opportunity that AI really is uh, enabling for us. So in the next few minutes, I'll take our time to kind of go through some of the things that we are learning. I was in fact just at uh, BET London uh, last week where we had a lot of conversations with many customers, higher education as well as K-12. Uh, BET London being the largest um, uh, technology uh, and, and training show in the world. It really is an opportunity for us to position what we are learning in the field and, and then also talk about the impact AI is having in education and what we offer as a value proposition to education, the steps we are taking towards aligning our solutions towards the responsible AI uh, principles that we offer and then um, the next steps that can be taken together if this is of interest to you uh, and to your organization as to how we can be a partner to your organization as you are on this journey for AI transformation. Look, I think it goes without saying that today's world, you know, you can't go uh, without having this conversation around AI. I'm yet to, uh, I've avoided conversations around AI, but it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, it, it literally is the center of a lot of the conversations we are having. Uh, and look, I think it, it is quite evident that, you know, the skills that are needed to be performed by humans, 45% can be augmented. So 53% of the educated skills that we are seeing based on our early deployments, pilot, you know, pilots and POCs, we are seeing that 53% of the educator skills need to be performed by humans, could be augmented by AI. And we are very clear about using language about augmentation and not about any kind of replacement or any kind of change to that uh, human capital and uh, human ingenuity. And even our branding will will that you will see later on is aligned with our aspiration to being a augmentation of human intelligence with uh, artificial intelligence. And, and you know, what we are seeing also based on early conversations and, and financial kind of uh, details that have been shared by our customers, for every dollar that has been spent here, there is a realization of, of an ROI of, you know, 3.4 or more. So that's something that really is it's having an immediate impact. So even from a time saving perspective, cost saving, or even expanding the and uh, expanding the capabilities of both administrative staff as well as educator staff in in the organizations, really is paying off in a very short amount of time. And of course, we need uh, you know eighty two percent of leaders have told us that you know they need new skills to prepare for this world of AI. So. That's something that we are very uh, cognizant of and want to make sure that any conversation we have uh, is centered on, you know, the educator upskilling or even uh, IT upskilling and, and and certification attached to that as well. So something that has been a, a conversation that we've led for the last, um, you know, 16 plus months, that this has been a mainstream conversation. So it's it's amazing that you know we've we've pivoted as an organization at Microsoft, we've pivoted onto the AI journey in a very short amount of time. Uh, it is evident in the in not just our uh, brand value uptick, but also in the share value uptick. So 
We had our um, earnings call early today, and very happy to see a very positive trend in the in the Microsoft um, outlook based on on the on the leadership position we have taken in AI. Now, as it comes towards uh, education specifically, we definitely see a opportunity uh, for AI to boost inclusivity, productivity, and uh, you know offer opportunity to reimagine solutions. Uh, to long-standing challenges in education uh, at, at a time when we probably need them the most, right? Uh, so it's inspiring to consider the opportunities we have to maximize the transformative potential of AI in many ways, you know, such as developing new learning tools, providing an aid for creating content, building AI literacy, improving student services, simplifying scheduling, and many others, right? So. We really are working with our customers and our partners to evaluate the opportunities with AI based on your needs and objectives. And what you'll see here is that we are looking to you know, enable this impact in every aspect, you know, from accelerating learning, where we wanna make sure that the student has the opportunity uh, from an engagement perspective to be better engaged with your educators. Uh, to making sure that the educators are getting the data that they need uh, to analyze how effective their, you know, their teaching and learning processes are. Having the ability to personalize that learning because we want to make sure that this is inclusively designed and, and improve that accessibility. So what you'll see here is, a, is centered on a, an enabling equitable education as the kind of grounding principle with inclusive design, simplified and secure IT as the key enablers, which then at the end of the day are enabling three scenarios for us, accelerating learning, improving efficiencies and, and preparing students for the future. That's really the kind of the wheel that we look at here. But you know, foundationally it is based on enabling an equitable um, so education solution. And we wanna make sure you know, from our improving efficiency, how do we help you create and customize content in a way that makes sense for you, uh, both from a, uh, from from your institution's perspective, but also how it meets your uh, you know requirements to make sure that you have uh, the ability to personalize that content as required. Uh, enhancing support services that a lot of our education institutions have had to do in some cases manually using paper forms and other things in the past. We are now you know seeing education institutions who are using. Uh, chatbots as a way of of, of uh, interaction between the uh, student and the services that are provided to that service. So gone are the days of even uh, you know electronic forms, and now moving more and more into this world of uh, AI powered services that really uh, fast track a lot of the services that uh, you know our students are expecting from us. And given that students now come to us in a very a digitally savvy consumer centric world where they have already experienced customization and and fast level of services from many different um, service providers that they interact with it's really important as a value differentiator for many institutions as well of course that means that we need to unlock the productivity of the folks who have been doing things potentially manually in the past and and enabling them to really uh, help you address the needs of your of your students and which basically comes down to how do we automate these processes and introduce AI to enable a lot of that interaction with the students and and your you, you know your community at large, uh, and making sure that this is happening in a very you know secure manner because we want to make sure that you know unfortunate reality of today's world is education is the most hacked industry on the planet. This is based on you know trillions of signals that Microsoft receives. As, the, uh, as a premier provider of security solutions, uh, we are now the largest uh, security solution uh, provider on the planet. Uh, it does give us a lot of insight into what's happening. And uh, protecting your data is, is a key priority, not just for yourselves, but also for any of our customers who are using our services. So we want to make sure that we do that at a machine speed, which, we, which is happening at real time right now, which can be both malicious actors as well as state-sponsored malicious actors that is unfortunately a growing trend in the last few years. Uh, and, and finally, from uh, preparing your students for the future, we want to make sure that we build literacy for all and equip your students with the skills that are needed to make sure that um, 
things happen uh, for them when they are uh, when they leave your institution as well prepared students who can participate in the general economy uh, uh, on the planet. Now, this is not just something that's been, uh, it's not just a theoretical thing. We are delivering on all of these. So we can see this is happening right now in many uh, you know, premier institutions across the planet. There are some case studies already that we have enabled and I'd be happy to link you out to these. Uh, when I share the presentation, you will get the links to these. But we have seen like University of Michigan building tools that emphasize on equity, accessibility and privacy. We've got uh, universities in Europe that are helping staff search, brainstorm, uh, and enable content creation using Microsoft Copilot. Uh, partners like Anthology empowering instru instructors to streamline and create course content and integrate that into their uh, tools, the LMSs and other things that Anthology creates. And of course, we are seeing you know universities uh, enabling personalized student engagement and really bringing meaning to the data that is uh, in most cases is siloed and is, is chaotic at best. So we've seen how we can consolidate and start putting reasoning engines on the data that's already available. Uh, a lot of the times the, the hard part is the data is there, it's just in multiple locations. We need to have the ability to consolidate and bring that into one place that can be easily reasoned on using natural language rather than having to learn uh, specific data analytics uh, languages that, that in the past have been the norm. So those are you know amazing uh, examples. We, we, if you want, wish, if this is something that is of interest, later on we can actually even get into a, a demo of how we've done that and how we've helped particular customers achieve their um, you know, kind of data analytics um, uh, vision using AI. As, as a separate demo later on, but not in today's session, but in a separate session. And at the foundation of all of this, to enable all of this to happen, it does come down to how we enhance learning experiences with our tools that are built on top of this cloud. Now, this is the most comprehensive cloud that basically creates a uh, solution set based on in, you know the infrastructure that we have, the digital app and app innovations that we are uh, investing in, Data and AI, as I just spent a little bit of time just then, uh, you know, creating that cohesive kind of, um, you know, journey for you to take your existing data and, and 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 put analytics engine using AI. The modern work business, which is what I represent here, uh, is a, is a key foundation of how we actually interact, create, distribute, uh, collaborate on content, and and really start bringing this, uh, you know, six C's of 21st century learning to life. Uh, business applications to enable the, those efficiencies that we talked about in creating you know the the relationship management with your students and so on and so forth and finally but you know definitely not the least uh, security as a key enabler to make sure that you have a trusted well informed and well managed experience there in your in your uh, in your digital experience that you're having in the cloud right so that's something that really are are focused on and to enable that, of course, once we've got these cloud capabilities, we really are enabling a, uh, a vast, I suppose, continuum of, of experiences that you can have with this uh, cloud. So you can you know, enhance your learning using our uh, you know, productivity tools from, from modern workplace, uh, using Teams and Microsoft 365 applications that most of you may be familiar with. Uh, unlocking that productivity that has normally been done manually using the co-pilot stack. And if and where required, we can help you build your own co-pilots because we're not just about what Microsoft provides out of the box, but also leveraging on the innovation and, and uh, ingenuity of your own developer community to extend the capabilities of our co-pilots by building your own co-pilots and be it low code or pro code uh, kind of uh, uh, capabilities are also available in that. So really what we are thinking about is as a continuum is we want to co-innovate co with trust and safeguard for your organization is really the kind of transformation you know, journey uh, mantra that we, we are aligning to. I'll take a pause here and see if there are any questions or any comments before I move on into how we are actually making this available. Yeah. 
is this is this of interest is this aligned to what we are looking for if not you know it may be just a it's just maybe just me talking on on on, on speaker there so I want to make sure this is relevant and rather than me going through all the PowerPoints that we have, I just want to make sure that we make this relevant. I just wanted to give you a bit of a foundational conversation as to how we're thinking, and then we can go into any of your particular concerns that you may have. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put a one slide up before, if, you know, this may even give you more questions um, than answers. Now, look, it's 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 clear that, you know, we've got a plethora of capabilities and, and solutions that we bring to bear. Uh, we're very proud of the, you know, options that we are enabling. Um, you know, there's the applications of AI and education from our perspective are tremendous, right? Uh, you know, we have seen many different experiences as part of the Microsoft Cloud that, you know, you probably already have used some of these because each month we are seeing Microsoft Teams, Azure AI is transcribing millions of hours of meetings in real time and captioning, you know, multiple millions of characters and translating them from one language to the other. Uh, you know, we are helping every day, we are you're helping create 4.1 million PowerPoint slides using our designer capabilities. We are, you know, committed to developing secure, inclusive learning solutions designed to help everyone reach their highest potential that's possible through the technology by using things like learning tools. Um, all of this is now already here. For example, we've got, we've got this capability, which was a, a big hit at the BET conference called Reading Coach. Uh, that uses pronunciation assessment API for accuracy assessment. So, you know, knowing that a student is able to read correctly uh, is, is really foundational to their ability to then later on, you know, learn to, uh, you know, read, learning to read leads to reading to learn. So it's a conversation that we are having right now as to how we can use AI as an enabler for literacy and numeracy and digital citizenship as as a as a as a differentiator, so those are things that we are doing right now, uh, and it's it's fundamentally already available in our platform, and is also available as API sets that you can develop your own applications on top of. So it's not something that is um, kind of separated; it's it's a continuum. So you'll see a lot of these AI use cases are already available um, from our services. So I'll I'll take a pause there and see if there are any questions or comments or feedback. Hi, Amit, it's Amber here from New Zealand. Hi. Hi, I'm just interested in the build your own co-pilot, what sort of use cases you've had around there, particularly with data management? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what we have seen there and uh, like I said in, in my previous comment, I'm happy to get into that demo on a separate call. But essentially what we are seeing is there are multiple different silos of uh, data in the organization and that has built up over the years, right? There have been tools that departments may have deployed. There may be tools at a, at a university level or institution level or government level that come into play. Uh, and there are internal data repositories. Sometimes there are external data repositories and we can start to bring them together and really start having a reasoning engine on top of that, which is natural language based, rather than having to learn how to, you know, do the queries using R or any other languages that have been popular in the past uh, few years. That has really been a game changer. And a we have an example of a anonymized data that a uh, customer of ours actually shared with us from 500 schools, about 250,000 uh, users, and we, we can easily show you how we can power a natural language query against that data set and really start to hone in on things like, hey, how's the demographic of this particular student impacting their results or their ability to attend or their you know, progress or, or the lack thereof and, and the reasoning behind that. Um, it can even get to granular enough to even you know, bring in data from external sources like you know, um, city planning and urban crime, rec, uh, you know, reports and other things like that, that that can help you understand what could be impacting a student's learning outcome. Uh, and it's it's quite telling when we can actually start you know correlating this multiple data sources as to how that learning journey for that student is happening, 
Uh, the other thing we are also doing is we're capturing through our tools uh, the social emotional learning aspect, especially for younger students, but increasingly even for university students. We are seeing universities adopting our social emotional uh, tools, um, learning tools that that capture the mindset of that student and what kind of other uh, issues that may be troubling the student that may impact their learning outcomes at the institution. So all of that, being able to reason on that using just natural language is an amazing, uh, not just an amazing demonstration of the uh, technology, but a real world outcome that we've been able to deliver in parts of parts of the world, actually parts of um, multiple regions across the world, uh, including Australia and some some customers in uh, North America, Europe, and others. I don't have a specific example out of New Zealand, but I'm sure there's probably one there as well. Thank you. Does that help? Does that help you with? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it just helps that... me visualize it. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I had a more. Uh, a better way of doing it. I'll see if I can do that during this conversation as as more questions come along. Anything else? I'm sure this is sparking off some ideas. And in fact, I'll say one thing. We've actually, um, I'll, I'll give you another example in New Zealand, just sorry, because the ma'am who asked the question is from New Zealand. We've actually developed with the ministry in New Zealand a solution that uses personalized recommendation for curriculum content. So it's actually called the Online Curriculum Hub, which has been used by the ministry. In, in um, So it uses technology that is very akin to what's happening in a, uh, you know, Xbox or Netflix or Amazon or other, where the, it recommends, hey, because you watch this, watch that. Now we've got that as a continuum of learning for curriculum content. To say, hey, because you learned this, you need to learn this as an, or if you did not pass this, you need to go back and revise this. So it uses personalization recommendations and it uses the machine learning algorithms built into Azure to enable that to happen. So we're using a, a, retail, a retail engine actually to apply that to uh, education scenario. And it has been well received and very well adopted by our customers in um, Ministry of Education in New Zealand. Sorry, I just thought I'd put that in as a side note because of the New Zealand reference there. Does that, does that uh, help as well? Yeah, so there's a lot that is happening in that scenario uh, from a data management, because we do have you know potentially the most uh, comprehensive data platform there is. Now I will address the, you know, uh, I suppose the the question around how do we actually go to market with this? The branding you will see across the world, and I and I joke when I say this to many people. I know it's called Microsoft Copilot, but the way it's been talked about, I sometimes feel like I work for a company called Copilot that has a product called Microsoft. Uh, it's only because it's become such a central conversation that the branding of Microsoft has become very aligned to the Copilot. So it's the everyday AI assistant, which is basically uh, a solution based on enterprise grade security, privacy compliance and responsible AI as the means to enabling what has consumer, what has caught the consumer eye back in November, 2022, which was, you know, how do I interact with AI using a chat interface, uh, which was primarily chat GPT, but Copilot has become our branding for that. It enables you to not only talk to the service with data that has been trained on, but also real-time data that is available on the web. So it, it has the ability to extend out to the internet. And, and by the way, as a consumer, you can start off with that for free. So it's something that uh, in, in other cases may, may be a paid service, but in our case, to connect to the web and to interact with that is, is a free service available to consumers. Uh, however, what we recommend for institutions is we also enable enterprise grade security, privacy compliance and responsible AI principles. Uh, and we enable what is called Microsoft Copilot with commercial data protection, uh, which basically means you are always in control of, of what, what is happening and, uh, and, and the output and the, the universe of data that you work with and, and whether you want to work within your data or work with your web, uh, with the web data and a combination thereof is entirely up to you. So we are already seeing a dramatic improvement in, in the interaction because this has now been happening now for the last 
nine plus months. A lot of you know data has been gathered from our what is called the Microsoft Work Index, uh, Work Trend Index. Sorry, uh, again, there's a live link which I'll send you the presentation. And what we're seeing is a lot less time being spent searching for information. You know, seventy-five percent less in some cases. Time uh, reduced in you know doing mundane tasks. Uh, even like what I'm, I mean, in my day-to-day -day life now, I can't imagine my day-to-day -day productivity happening without a without the copilot summarizing my emails. Uh, for me to be in two places at once, where I can, you know, attend those meetings that are immediately important to me and watching the recordings and transcriptions of recordings of meetings that I have not been able to attend and being able to do, you know, catch, uh, be able to catch up on that and be able to search on that and reason on that and correlate that to other data that we are already working on uh, through other documents and things that I might have uh, done so is really, really powerful. And, you know, we're seeing, you know, quite a bit of uh, time saved. And when we talk about 1.2 hours being saved on the average per week in, in a commercial sense, it's a huge saving and, and time uh, back to the organization uh, when that happens to multiple uh, you know, end users at, at, at a time. So we are now seeing entire organizations being transformed. You will see some very uh, prominent commercial organizations already been on this, uh, on this for a while, and they are learning a lot from their initial deployments on how it's actually having a cascading effect on the workflows. Uh, they're spending less time searching and being more efficient and it really is the you know the, the UI for the enterprise knowledge and how we actually bring this together. It will be like using a spreadsheet instead of a calculator, right? I mean, imagine having to go back to a calculator now. That's not possible. Or keeping database records instead of paper records, or having a link to a document instead of a printed paper. So th those are significant changes we have actually seen. The advancement that this empowers uh, in in the uh, in the workplace, right? So. Uh, you know, just literally by having the, even the UX of a lot of the applications are evolving rather quickly in, in the way that you're able to uh, process data, uh, you know, resolve more user issues per hour through servicing um, tickets and things like that. So being able to have that interaction with the AI rather than um, having to do those things manually. Coding is one of the first things that happened with GitHub Copilot, something that was uh, you know, something that really caught atten the attention of our CEO when we were initially getting on this whole journey is how we en were enabling our own productivity of our own developers at Microsoft. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening much quicker from completion of tasks to creating workflows and uh, from a security perspective, being able to respond to threats in minutes, not hours, because now we are able to uh, correlate a security incident, you know, incidences across millions of audited events uh, using natural language. So even that itself is a huge you know, uh, gain for a lot of uh, the security professionals in our, in our organizations that we have implemented this in. And, and just to kind of put this into perspective, there is a co-pilot literally for every experience, right? The Microsoft co-pilot, which is the chat, which is what most of us would be you know, uh, aware of or have interfaced with, uh, we are now introducing that uh, into Microsoft 365 to work alongside with the apps you use every day. So inside Outlook, inside Teams, inside Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and others. So that's something that is now built in 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 uh, in our Copilot for Microsoft 365 capabilities. Extending that into our Dynamics platform to uh, enable you to do your job in a more effective manner. And this is really where you know, service staff or sales staff at organizations really start to be powered by a co-pilot uh, environment. Now, enabling, you know, no code or low code environments in, in a very quick manner. So, you know, being able to describe your application requirements and having Power Platform build it is possible. So you can literally using, even just using your hand, draw up a screenshot of what you want the, the screen to do or the application to do, and then being able to just take a photo of it, put it into Power Platform, and it codes up uh, and 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 rigs up a uh, data platform behind it automatically using the description that you've put in the screenshot is is possible today. 
Uh, and again, um, from a security perspective, security co-pilot enabling that uh, defense uh, at machine speed uh, and GitHub co-pilot for increasing developer productivity. So, so these are you know conversations that we are happy to have. And in fact, a lot of our institutions that we've been working on uh, as who've been forward thinking some of the examples I showed you earlier are looking at uh, different uh, journeys for their own needs, right? Some of them are on Copilot for Power Platform. Some are using GitHub Copilot already and have been for a while. Uh, most now are trialing and and um, and doing pilots on Copilot for Microsoft 365. That's a it's a it's a pilot that is that is actively being done across hundreds of uh, universities across the planet right now. And uh, to your question earlier, how do we actually then, you know, those the, on the previous slide, what I showed you was what we provide as a solution, if you like, as a uh, SaaS as service, software as a service. Uh, in this case, there's also the ability for you to, you know, the Microsoft Copilot experiences we reviewed is fine, but how do we build your own? You can now easily manage, deploy, and customize your Copilots to fit your business needs or requirements. You can harness the same services that we do. The Azure AI services is what Microsoft uses to build those experiences in our in our products. You can do that to build your own co-pilots to build your very own experiences in the way that meets your requirements. And we, we really find it that you know we can partner with you to accelerate the value you can realize from these AI investments that we have made, made uh, in, in doing so. So Building your co-pilots, the top capabilities really are around, you know, being able to uh, build your own co-pilot experience and solutions using that same end-to-end -end AI tool chain. So building your own co-pilot allows you to infuse the power of generative AI into your own existing apps or building these abilities into new applications that you may be building from ground up. Uh, co-pilot that you build can then, you know, allow users to chat with the unique data sources that are within your environment get more intelligence from that data via advanced analytics. Uh, this is the example I was uh, describing earlier about how do we take disparate um, content, put it into a data lake and, and have the ability to do use natural language interface to enable that conversation to happen. Generate a content to your own needs based on existing content that you have, or even create new bespoke experiences that build uh, your own reputation externally or internally within your organizations from a brand perspective. So it's important to identify what your goals are and how we can then help you build those. And to build those, you know, we do have a stack. Uh, you know, what you know, as you think about what you want to build, we also want you to think about how you're going to go about building them. So we call it the co-pilot stack. It's an application development pattern, really, that can help you conceptualize how you want to bring these next generation foundational models your own data and powerful powerful AI infrastructure that you can trust and depend on, right? So starting right from, you know, the, uh, your day, you, you, you know, running your application in the Microsoft Cloud, building on top of that, the AI infrastructure, the foundational mo models, the tool chain, and your data that you can then, you know, reason on and uh, orchestrate using the AI orchestration engine which you can then surface inside Microsoft apps, your own co-pilots or inside Microsoft co-pilots and build them using um, uh, the co-pilot studio. So co-pilot studio is the tool that you'll use to enable that to happen. So it's really is a offering from the cloud up to, to the, you know, to the, the you know, content uh, development tools, as well as your actual co code development tools so, you know, operational stores like our Cosmos Analytics with Fabric, Governance Engine with Purview, along with partnerships with uh, other external organizations like Oracle, Snowflake, and Databricks. We all, you know, the AI infrastructure is also based on a really ground, you know, the AI orchestration infrastructure was really uh, built ground up. It was not something that we have reused existing cloud uh, infrastructure, we had to enable a new kind of network, new kind of GPUs, NPUs, and CPUs to enable this to run really fast in, in, a, a, in, a, in a more effective, cost-effective, as well as a, uh, you know, something that's really going to be of, of a performant nature when it comes to AI workloads. So this is where 
you know, we do actually have, uh, I'll take a minute to kind of ground you on the, on the way we are approaching this from a responsible AI perspective as well. And it's, it's because we are grounded on, on, you know, a few realities and, and principles that we want to uh, align with, because this is what the feedback we've received from our customers. When you are putting your data in the Microsoft cloud, it is your data. We have no access to it. This is not used to train, your data is not used to train any foundational mo models without permission. Your data is protected by the most comprehensive enterprise compliance and security controls that, that there are. So that, that means that it, it really brings together how we align the capabilities of, of building your AI solutions on the AI principles that are built on top of accountability, transparency, and that are grounded in fairness, reliability, safety, privacy, and security, and inclusiveness. So something that we are very, very uh, keen to make sure that we um, you know, drive this home because this is the reason, not just the technology, but also the grounded, grounded principles in how we are approaching AI is the reason why a lot of our customers are aligned with, with Microsoft on this, on this particular journey. So how we see that in action is, you know, we make sure that there is the principles that we talked about, the corporate standards that we, we adhere to, uh, the implementation, which which includes the training, the tools, the testing capabilities that you are able to take advantage of, and I, I can I can share with you the the training plans and and training uh, that we make available, including certification that has been looked at by many uh, institutions. And you can actually incorporate a lot of our training into your you know your existing curriculum, so that it becomes a a dual advantage. You can use it in your curriculum, but also it helps the students get industry certification that that they can take to market, and and of course the oversight that is uh, enabled for you and to meet your uh, local compliance requirements and uh, for for your country or the jurisdiction that you're operating in. And lastly, I just want to make sure that we recently announced the Copilot copyright commitment, helping customers use Microsoft Copilot with the trust and confidence knowing that if there, you're challenged on copyright grounds, we will assume responsibility for the potential re legal risks involved. Ahmed, the... can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. hi, sorry to interrupt. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure, sure. I'm from India. So yes. um, when you said it's your data, so much of yeah. can you just go back to two slides if you don't mind? Yeah, the one before this? Okay, okay the one before that. So when you're talking about your data is your data from a technical standpoint, how do you ensure that you don't have, because you made a statement, we have no visibility to it. So how do you ensure you don't? That is the commitment we make. So that is- no, I Commitment mean, is, I'm talking from yeah, a and, that, those, those are, and those are audited by multiple organizations. It's not just, and it is directly reflecting in the way that it's been adopted, right? No, we would not be in this no, business for the last multiple years if this was, you know, breaching all of our commitments. No, I just Those want to audit... understand from a technical standpoint. Agreed, audit and all. Audit generally is a postmortem. So yeah. I am just asking from a technical standpoint, how do you ensure that? Oh, that's how the cloud has been designed, so that we do not, as we don't have access. In fact, a lot of times our customers forget admin passwords. It's a, this is a very common scenario in education because the admin who creates the tenant and leaves the uh, enterprise forgets to hand over the admin password to the next user. We are actually not able to override that. No, that's all fact, right. That's yeah, all I mean, right. Saving the password in a SHA or something and all that is entirely different. You cannot decrypt it because a hash is very difficult to take back. Encryption, on the contrary, can be decrypted. A hash cannot. So from a password standpoint, that may not be a correct example. But what I'm trying to say here is that when you talk about encryption, what are the controls? So I just had a very technical question. If, if that cannot be answered, I'll refrain from ask, asking more. But this is uh, more from a technical standpoint, not what audit talks about. So how do the controls manage? How do you manage the encryption at the end of the day? So that was the key question. Yeah, we'll take that offline then. If that is, that is a technical detail, then I'll have to get you in touch yes. with the right people. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Great. But, but just just from a from a uh, you know from a uh, you know practicality perspective, there is no way for us when you create your own tenant. Oh, Amit, you, there is a way. So let's not get into that. That's what I wanted to understand because uh, I look after security. So there is a way, and this is an ongoing conversation with Microsoft. So 
since you're talking about education here, yeah, so I, let's take it offline then. But there is a way. We'll take it offline. Yeah, we'll yeah, take it offline. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Is there any others or? Jamil uh, from Pakistan. Uh, just, uh, uh, you know, AI system is normally working based on historical data, AI systems. So personalized learning cannot be properly done in uh, entities which are new and students, they're taking suppose first course in a degree program, how, how they can be given personalized learning experience. If we are not using data of other student, and suppose I'm a student taking first course in my degree program, how I can get personalized, personalized learning experience? Because I don't, I don't have any uh, previous data. So that is one thing that is uh, I want. And the second thing is, what about the compatibility issue? Suppose a university or educational institution using some other systems as well from some other vendors, how this uh, Microsoft system will be compatible with it. Suppose SAP and uh, Oracle and some other data is residing on some other platform. How it can be shifted or read by the Microsoft products? Yeah, okay, I'll address the second question first. How do we work? Uh, so we are working with all of those vendors that you just mentioned. So SAP, Oracle, Databricks, others are part of the AI kind of consortium that we're working on. So from a, how do we enable your co-pilots to be able to talk to them? We, we, will, we do have connectors into their environment so that you can use our co-pilot capabilities to talk into specifically SAP, Oracle, and uh, Databricks. Uh, there will be more organizations that will start building those uh, connectors or have already built those. I can get you the uh, up-to-date list, but at least what I know of are, are those three or two that you mentioned, plus Databricks being the other. Uh, from your other question about how do we enable personalization of learning, that is uh, that is now going to be based on which experience you're going to build this on. Because like I said, there are multiple different experiences we are enabling for you. Um, so if you look at what's happening here, um, you know, Microsoft Copilot, you can, you know, it's a chatbot that will enable you to chat with the web with data commercial data protection. Uh, the Copilot for Microsoft 365 with works alongside your applications will build on your documents over time that, that you're building in your Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, and that's really where, you know, the personalization can also happen because we're actually building experiences inside of Teams that, that enhance your learning, right? So I haven't done a product demo today. This is more of an approach conversation, but definitely is possible when you're using generative AI experiences inside Teams and, um, and Microsoft 365 apps to enable that personalization. And in fact, um, there is an example of that here. For example, we are creating a new rubric. It's just a generic example of how generative AI can enhance this experience for you so that you can actually create different experiences for different users. And we can regenerate it for different levels. For, for example, here it's automatically created a rubric for you. Right, you can create once you've created the rubric. You can even create the assignments to be to be personalized for different learning levels. And we've seen this right now being used on a day-to-day -day basis by our K-12 customers uh, and some higher education customers as well. So those this is one example, but there are multiple examples of how leveraging on top of the co-pilot experience can be easily adopted into uh, creating a personalized learning experience for end users. I hope that gives you a flavor for what's going on there. Okay. Thank you. Any others? A couple of more questions. Hamid Bandi is uh, about the productivity. You were talking about uh, a large percentage of improvements but then 1.2 hours per week you have any insight on to why it is so low this 1.2 hours per week per user is is because they are they, this is an initial uh, rollout of copilot it is also you know a lot of it is change management a lot of it is what is is is, is going to improve over time because i mean these are just initial numbers that we've got in in the last six plus months of 
doing our initial you know rollouts in in commercial environments and the data has been uh, put into the work trend index that you can link out to on the on the web there is data behind it yes other one is uh, you mentioned about emotional uh, aspects of learning learners yes i remember, I remember seeing some uh, guidelines maybe from unesco saying not to use uh, emotional aspects of learners uh, what is your take on that that's their take on it we we have our, our take on it i'm not going to comment on what their take is but we we definitely see this being aligned to a lot of our customers requirements we are you know reflecting on what our customers are requesting us to provide as a day to day learning experience uh, in fact now what we are seeing is staff emotional experiences also being captured not just the not just the students uh, emotional learning experience so that's the practical reality of some of the customers i mean of course it's an optional optional opt in kind of solution it's not a must have so it depends on your philosophy of if that's something you align with then great if you don't then it's up to you yeah Thank you. Excellent. Look, I'll, I'll conclude by basically saying, you know, how do we get started on this? We do have the uh, AI literacy and skills across your organization kind of content that's made available. So you can, you, you know, evaluate what are the options that you can use in, in your organization. Uh, you can, of course, try them out in your environment. If you already have a Microsoft 365 environment, easy to kind of get started on that. Uh, we will also make sure that, you know, if you're going to ground your co-pilots on any kind of data, that we make sure that the data foundation is solid and then, you know, try out building your own, own AI powered co-pilots. That's really where we are seeing a lot of our customers now in the last two weeks. That's what I've been focused mainly on is making sure that there is governance put on their data before they, uh, build out their own AI powered co-pilot experiences. Something that's really um, quite, 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 um, you know, uh, engaging for our customers. So that's something that I'm spending a lot more time on. So with that, I will um, conclude here, and I really appreciate the opportunity to kind of give a view into where we are in this journey. Of course, there will be more to share as time goes on, and uh, a lot more that's happening in this space. Thank you, Amit. Any more questions? So thank you, Amit. So sure. my, uh, my query is that how we can introduce into our curriculum because we have the students from different disciplines, a lot of disciplines, even they don't have the knowledge, enough knowledge of a computer and others. So if we like to introduce AI knowledge to all the graduates, how can we change our curriculum? Do you have any idea? And this is first yeah. and second. Second question is that I have used the search GPT, but it is not it is not giving the updated data because I, we have to rely on the data two years back or even more than that. So how can we get the updated data on, on, in search GPT? Okay. Yeah, so I'm not representing chat GPT here. I'm representing Microsoft and Microsoft's product, which is Copilot. So Copilot itself is actually going to talk uh, to the web. So it does have the ability to talk to the internet. So it actually is using our, uh, you know, search that is powered by Bing to enable this to happen. So you can, you know, you know, query on on today's information. So if you go to copilot.microsoft.com, and this is what I'll, I'll just quickly do a quick demo of this so that everyone understands what I've been talking about. Uh, fundamentally, if I show you that, here we go. So you'll see on the left, I've signed in with my personal account, uh, but here on the right, I'm logging in with my work account. So you will see two, dif uh, two different experiences that are happening here. So you'll see here on the left, it is me as Amit Pawar at live.com. And on the right, it is me logged in as apawar at microsoft.com. And this is what we mean by commercially protected because any conversation we have here is protected and therefore does not, does not um, 
is not used by the uh, by the AI to train the AI model. Whereas on the left, you're using a consumer free service. So that has different uh, product terms and therefore has different uh, terms on how that data will be used. So it's very important that when we start using AI for commercial purposes or for your own use of, of uh, AI for your institution that you start using the protected mode, which is basically uh, co-pilot with commercial data protection. So that's the web interface. Now, the other thing is you'll notice here is, and that's why it says your, uh, when I move this to the work, it actually is saying co-pilot for Microsoft 365, which is where I can actually start inter interacting and talking about, hey, look, show me what's happening. What's the latest from a particular person inside my organization? Right, so say for example, I'm talking to Larry Nelson. It will show me what is the latest email that he sent me. What are the different documentation that I'm working with? He's a colleague of mine at, at work. You know, he, it will actually bring all of that information together, which is live data that is coming from my own interaction inside my organization with all of the work that he's been doing with me. So it goes and looks at all of the emails, the documents, the Teams chats, and all of those things that are happening with this particular, so it's combing through documents, emails, and chats that that will, you know, so here it is. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. So there are many, many email conversations, different people here that are that are interacting with me. Now, the same thing can be done externally for the web as well, but but it is now using the web data, not the internal data, right? So that's, that's how we are, you know, looking at the continuum. You go from consumer services to web services protected by commercial data protection, to then also enabling services within the within your tenant with your own data. It is this is not grounded in the public data. This is grounded in my in my corporate data, right? So, you know what? So if I wanted to say, hey, what did this person say about a particular topic? I could easily do that. Summarize, you know, emails where I was mentioned recently. So you know, I don't have to go look through my email box. I can just talk to it, and it'll come back and and tell me. Or something something that uh, I may have missed overnight. So I do this every morning, for example, you know. Um, you know, I can say, hey, summarize emails that, that I was mentioned in. See, there you go. So yeah, about 20 minutes ago, something happened. And while I was talking to you, there's been an email that came to me, so on and so forth. It's really, really powerful way for me to actually be much more productive. So this actually is way more than just, uh, you know, the numbers that we are seeing earlier on is, is uh, is 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 1.2 hours. I believe that will go up dramatically as more and more people start using these sort of uh, capabilities within the product. I mean, I, I can do that same thing within my own email threads uh, and my Teams meetings and and so on and so forth. So these are some you know very quick demonstrations of capabilities that are available within the uh, for just purely from a chat interface perspective. But yes, to answer your question, we do enable you to. Uh, do things in real time right now. Hope that answers the question. Any others? Okay. Sure. Professor Rosen, any yeah, other questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't see you, so I don't know. All good? Right. Good? good? All right. Seems like all good. Thank you. Amit. Excellent. Thank you for. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Appreciate the opportunity to have this engagement. And uh, yeah, all the best for the rest of the event. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Thanks again. Bye for now. Yeah. Thank you.